What is going on, everyone? I hope you are all having a wonderful day. We're going to be doing uh, the same thing today, but a little bit of a different twist. Today, I'm going to go over the S&P uh, E-mini futures contracts, breaking it down from the top down, uh, monthly, weekly, daily, to gain context of what's been occurring in the larger picture. Then we're going to break down the 30-minute time frame, do some technical analysis from a market profile uh, TPO standpoint, gauge what occurred uh, in the previous day, yesterday, and today because I did not make a video yesterday. Uh, so to gauge context on what occurred uh, and to know uh, how we traded today, we need to know that uh, which happened yesterday. On top of that, we're also going to be reviewing uh, DraftKings. We're going to be looking at uh, DKNG. We're going to uh, be looking at the monthly, weekly, and daily chart on DraftKings because I believe there was a great swing opportunity that set up and I did not take advantage of. Uh, I have a really good friend who uh, has been accumulating shares at the low prices and I think he was doing the right thing by uh, doing such. So I want to kind of review the chart because I think it was a great swing opportunity if you're a swing trader. Even for the long term hold, I think it is a good company to uh, that sets you up for some really good returns later down the road. Uh, when this market really wants to start to kick its legs in gear and start pushing this thing higher, uh, which looks like we might be at a turning point. We're not sure. Next week we got the Fed. That could uh, do some things. This morning we had uh, GDP came out better than expected in the fourth quarter. We came in with like 2.4%. So things are kicking up for the economy, it seems. But keep in mind, when the economy is pumping, inflation can still rise. All right. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, that's something the Fed is going to be keeping in mind coming into next week. We're going to see if we continue to raise interest rates by uh, 0.5 or 75 point basis. Uh, or if we're going to cut it back down to 25 and start letting this thing cool off. We'll see what what, what can occur uh, going into next week. Tomorrow is the last trading day of the week. Uh, and then we have until Tuesday, I believe, of next week. Let me check. Uh, we've got, yep, Tuesday of next week is the last trading day of the first month of the year. Crazy, we're already there. All right, so let's break it down. Monthly and a large balance, all right? In a large balance here, I'm using this very large balance. I'm using August of last year's high, October of last year's low as my balance. Could you call it a three-month balance using November, December, and this month you could uh, and either way if you were to come out of this balance you would be testing that August high which has been in place for quite some time and I think it's going to be a very pivotal point uh, for buyers bulls of any kind that want to step into the market we're at a very interesting moment in the market where things are starting to align for the market to really break or have a leg up or down in either, either direction and you'll see that here on the day let's go into our weekly Weekly chart. We are one time framing up. Still continuing to one time frame up. Look at this. We are peaking our head above this trend line once again. Uh, taking back part of this outside week down. If you remember, we had that big ass, excuse me, that big old outside week down right there that, can, that started a trend down. We began one time framing down, but put this thing back into a balance right here on this day or on this week. And then came out of balance. We've been one time framing up uh, one, two, three weeks in a row, taking back this massive sell tail of that week. Uh, that weekly high, 41.41. We get up to that and above it. Things are looking good for the buyers. Uh, let's go ahead and look into the daily. Daily, we were in a we were in a balance uh, as of yesterday. Coming into yesterday. Uh, we were up, right? We were up coming in Monday, right? We uh, had taken out our previous balance high, which was right here at 40.35, uh, 75 in that range. We came out of balance to the upside. We were one time framing up, and then we had that inside day on Tuesday. And then yesterday, uh, because we didn't technically stop one time framing up or taking out previous day's high, uh, we finally put us put ourselves back into a three-day balance. So I was calling it a three-day balance uh, after yesterday. We uh, took out previous two days lows. So Tuesday and Monday, we set a new low on the week. 
And then after that, guess what? Boom, we're back up. We're breaking out of the three-day balance today with not a lot of uh, volume on the day, but, and it, it was a it was a very strange day uh, as far as how, it, how the event occurred. And we'll break that down in a 30-minute. But breaking out of our three-day balance here, looking to push up higher. We got a little nice hammer candle here on the daily. We're going to look to continue to one time frame up to, coming into the end of the week tomorrow and maybe get this next daily high here at 40.39 uh, in that range. And then maybe gun it for the next daily high. And there's clear skies until this daily gap up here. If you look here, we got all of our uh, moving averages starting to converge a little bit. They're all starting to touch. Uh, on the ES contract, uh, this is the continuous contract that's on TOS. So this is continuous contract. All the uh, moving averages are starting to converge, starting to curl up here. Uh, that could be a sign of something. If we were to go into our, go into the S&P 500 just ETF, you can see they haven't quite started converging, but they're starting to. Uh, and you can see it a little bit more clearly here what is occurring. We back tested the 200 day moving average yesterday as well on the SPY. Something to keep in mind. Oop, wrong thing. That's for later. So, three day balance, breaking out of it, beginning to one time frame up to the upside. All right, let's go ahead and look into our 30 minute time frame. Go ahead and break down from a market profile standpoint what occurred all right so yesterday we need to gain context right we took out previous two days lows and got into the trend day from friday by just a hair uh yesterday we didn't do a whole lot in it but we took back some of the single prints and held the upper distribution from that day so we were in a three-day balance this whole range that i'm highlighting here was our balance right then we had a little bit of a double distribution trend day up after we had gapped down. We filled the gap uh, after E period. H popped it to create a set of single prints. And then we got a second distribution back into the previous day's value and range. We had that really wide uh, point of control up here, 11 wide point of control. And as I remember saying back on Tuesday that if we had came out and uh, didn't get much for it, that that would become an upside destination a magnet and guess what that did uh, and also was, I've been saying for a while that if we got above the 4050 level that we would go and test this non wide point of control up here which was also a magnet which happened today guess what these are destinations uh, that you can look for later down the road I did not mark in period but we got that today in in period so after yesterday's failed attempt at a trend day down Taking out the initial balance low, coming up, taking out the initial balance high, shorts covered, brought us back into the previous day's range and value. Big fail on their part. Guess that was a sign. Uh, also, that was a 200-day moving average test back there. And then coming into today, uh, what did we do? Well, we gapped higher above one, two, three daily highs, breaking out of our balance, right? Took out three daily highs, and then we back tested all of them by filling the uh, filling the gap here at L's high in A period. So A period was a pretty large range. A period's range was about 33 points, pretty good size there uh, in A period, as it was 33 point range, and we had back tested all these daily highs. So all those daily high destinations are gone, and then we just were left with what occurred today. So. We had our initial balance set, and it was A and B period, right? The first two 30-minute time frames is our initial balance. Uh, that didn't get taken out until C period. It was all of A's range that got taken out in C period. Uh, we took out... Let me back it up a little bit here. So we did take out the overnight high. All right, overnight high was up here around 66. We took out the overnight high, and we had a gap. So thing and value was higher, so things were in buyers' favors and and buyers' favor at at the beginning of the day at the open, uh, 
So on pullbacks, you were looking for a long here against the gap fill. So had, and I would have taken it had I been at home. I would have had a pretty large bid down here around L's high uh, to get long and then probably would have gotten out if we would have taken out M's low. But I wasn't here, but that was a great long opportunity against the gap fill because buyers had value. They had a gap initially and they taken out the overnight high. So felt like odds were pretty good on taking back, uh, going back up and getting back above the opening later in B period uh, to go get this non wide point of control. But that did not occur uh, as buyers couldn't quite get back above the opening after we had filled the gap in A, C period. Uh, couldn't get above the open or take out B periods high. That was a great risk reward short up there for anybody that was looking to get short. However, market generator information was telling us to take a long, but not near the highs. Uh, we pull back in C period, take out the initial balance low. We dipped our toe into the upper distribution because remember yesterday was a double distribution day. Uh, C's low to E's high was one and then I's low to L's high was the other distribution. We dipped our toe into it and didn't quite get near it. Another nuance was the overnight uh, low was also in that range. The overnight low was right there. If I were to go and turn this into show extended, you can see oh, the overnight low uh, which was an end period. We're going to, we're using end period. Actually, we did get it. We did get the overnight low. So we got the overnight low. I don't know. I think that's bad ticks there. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but we got the overnight low, but you can see up here, we got the overnight high in A period and then got the overnight low, I guess, in C period. So MGI was a little bit, um, market gener generated information was a little bit mixed there. Why do I keep doing that? Okay, but we didn't get it by much, right? We didn't get that low by much. We were trying and attempting to go trend to go and get test the lower distribution where the single print started at 40.12, uh, but we didn't quite get that as D came in and filled it. Uh, and then we kind of just grinded up higher. The only trade that I took today was in F period. All right, I was looking to get short around uh, because at the time we had, had things in seller's favor because we began one time frame down. We took out the overnight low. We took out the initial balance low and value went from uh, higher to overlapping to higher. So we were expecting the market to kind of sell on pushes up, which was the case for a little bit until in E period, we took out these highs, stopping the one time frame and down. Uh, st we stopped taking out previous time frames lows because D couldn't quite take out C's low. Build the single prints, bit of a nuance there that we weren't going to be going trend and edges could have been faded. It looked like a little bit of a B shape. So we were looking to have an afternoon rally high. That wasn't the case. We ended up with an afternoon pullback low in H. However, I did get short here in F period against half back at the time. Point of control was where I'm about to highlight. Point of control was right here. That's where point of control was at D's high. So I was looking this tr uh, short F period against halfback against C's high. My out was above B's high. I was looking to add up to that point, get out and hopefully get this thing to rotate back down into point of control. However, it pushed up a little bit higher than what I've liked. And I could have had a better trade on my hand had I been more patient. I can show you right here where I have uh, also the 144 moving average, which is something I use from time to time uh, to help me trade on the one minute time frame. You can see all my entries at short. I was getting short here at around 44, 47, which was at the time where halfback was. Halfback was around 47 before it got moved up to 52. Halfback was around 47 and it correlated with the 144. So I was looking to get short there, hopefully to reject it, pull back into where our um, point of control was at the time, right there. That's why I was, that was the game plan. However, I was comfortable with risking and adding all the way up to the open 
uh, and up to C's high. Out would have been above B's high because at that point I knew we would do what happened later in the day, which was grind above the day's high again. So as you can see, I was adding on shorts up, 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 up uh, in this consolidation zone. I added against, uh, kept adding up here. The highest fill that I got was around 55, uh, which was a really good. Had I been more patient and waited to get up near C's high, value high was also up here at the time. Uh, had I been more patient, would have had better entries and probably would have gotten out of this trade a lot better than I did. However, I made really good money as it pulled back in later in the time frame. Uh, and I exit out all my position on the way down and at the 144 because we pulled back, didn't quite get to the point of control. And I was looking, I was like, well, if we can't get to the point of control, that's a nuance is we're going to be raising POC, uh, raising that point of control, which we did later in the day. Uh, felt like that was, if that were to occur, we would hold the 144 and bounce off of it, which we did all day long. So happy to get out of the trade there. Um, exited all my position for a really good gain on the day. Ended up on the day roughly uh, 30 points or 30, no, not 30, 30 points on one account. Uh, and then between the other, it was roughly 20 points altogether. So 50 plus points net total. On the day really good day uh is trading for me as it was a one and done trade here in f period and i didn't do anything didn't participate in this grind up higher uh, which i'm happy with because i probably would have gotten hurt on a few shorts not that they didn't get paid because each time we pushed up you can see we had a little bit of a pullback uh, that could have gotten paid but also dips were being bought so let's go ahead mark our Oh, and we had that afternoon pullback low in H. So afternoon pullback low in H. That was a good long opportunity there. Uh, however, I probably would have waited until value low, ease low to take the long. But we go out with that afternoon pullback low. A 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 wide point of control. Nothing too significant, but it is there. We're not going to ignore it if we get down to it at some point in time. But let's go ahead and mark our high our hour low and our afternoon pullback low. So today's low was at 27.25, low of day. If we take that out tomorrow, then we put the daily right back into a balance uh, because the market doesn't go bull bear. We got to go bull balance up back to bull or bull balance bear, you know, things of that nature. So we take out tomorrow's low day or if tomorrow we take out this low day then we'll be firmly back to balance. Uh, but right now the daily is up for me. One time framing up on the daily today. Uh, the afternoon pullback low. Not too significant to lean on, but it will be there. We'll mark it as such just in case we pull back to it, see if there were buyers. Uh, there would be a visual area to trade against. Afternoon pullback low. And then after this, uh, if you're sticking around, We'll be breaking down our breaking down the DraftKings monthly, weekly, and daily charts. Twenty-three. All right. And then we have our high day up here. We did get that nine wide point of control that I've been talking about getting if we got acceptance above that forty fifty level. So that target was hit. That nine wide point of control no longer exists. It is no longer naked as we hit it. I a day here at 77 even. Now the question is, do we call uh, call it a price probe? I'm not sure because of how late in the day it was. Um, so I don't think, actually, for shits and gigs, we're going to call it, we're going to call L's high a price probe. I feel like that's a pretty significant area. Uh, 69.50. So the most bullish thing, you, and because the daily just turned up, the most bullish thing you want to see happen here is find acceptance above this price probe, meaning we uh, have this probe and we don't look back. We open up above, uh, L's high. We never touch this 69.50 area, and we continue to move higher up to this daily high up here at 40.90.75, which is our next daily high. So we got a price probe there. Best thing for buyers and bulls to alike 
is to find acceptance above it, continue to take out this daily high one time frame up some more, take out the 40, 90, 75 level, and then looks to get into that single print uh, trend day from December 13th at 40, 98, 50, and it fills at 41, 11, 25, and uh, nothing above that but a vacuum to that 41, 41 level that I've been talking about for quite some time. Uh, as far as da downside destinations go, we open up below the price probe. You don't have anything really until this 8 wide point of control, which isn't much to lean on, but that would be a target for algorithms to set their sights on. Then the afternoon pullback low and then the low of day. So uh, downside destinations are right there at 52.50, 43.25, and then 27.25 as our downside destinations. I just gave you the upside destinations. All right, so let's go ahead and break down the DraftKings. All right, so let's break down DraftKings from the monthly time frame. DraftKings monthly, we are in a four month balance. All right, four month balance, we've been one time framing down for one for quite some time uh, as DraftKings has been selling off from its all time highs up here at 74.38. We've been one time framing down for quite some time, taking out previous month's lows. Uh, we set an all time monthly low down here at $9.77. Uh, uh, and then we came back uh, to balance and then went to up, back to balance, down, down, back to balance or we're calling it down to balance. So we're in a four month balance. We're using October's uh, high as the high of it. And then we're going to use November's low as the, or not November's low, December's low as the low of our four month balance. So monthly balance low is $10.69. Monthly balance high is seven, $17.45. Great long opportunity uh, on a monthly standpoint against that monthly all-time low. Uh, if you were being getting longer around 10, put your stop below that monthly low at $9.77, you would have been risking, you know, a little over a dollar, dollar uh, fifty to get, uh, to gain potentially, because uh, um, my real target is up here at 21.37, potentially to gain back up to, uh, you know, 10 plus dollars. All right. Let's look at our day or let's look at the weekly. The weekly inside that monthly balance, right? We've been getting some accumulation here. Weekly inside that monthly balance. Uh, weekly's been one time framing up because we were in a weekly balance. Uh, and you can see that here. We were in a weekly balance. Zoom this in a little bit more. Boom. Okay. Because we had been one time framing down the weekly previous weeks. Uh, one time framing down doji and then we took out that weekly high uh, from the 26th put the weekly into a three-week balance so the balance low at the time was at uh, 1067 the balance high was at 1217 then we took that out and began to one time frame up on the weekly so we're one time framing up three weeks in a row now taking out previous weekly highs uh, next weekly high to take out and target is 1546 or uh, 47 and then the next weekly high above that is 1587 so good accumulation down here good risk reward uh, you could like I said taking the long against that weekly's low at 1053 stop was at nine dollar 77 cents good risk reward long there uh, from a swing standpoint to potentially come back up to the monthly balance high up here at 1745 uh, and then my ultimate target up here around the 2120 levels so you could potentially find sellers waiting in this area at the monthly balance high let's look at our daily daily starting to look good daily starting to look good daily is in a balance we are trying to get above the 200 day moving average. Uh, we've closed above the 50 a couple days now. We're in a balance. We're in a four day balance on the daily. 
looking to come out of balance to target these next couple areas at 1547, 1586, and then there's nothing until that 1745 level. I mean, you have this this daily high here at 17. 25 but I don't think it's that significant as I believe we should go and get that monthly high and test that monthly high up there at 1745 and if that happens uh, all, all things all stars have to align in order for that to happen that means the market as a whole uh, needs a boost from the S&P 500 uh, futures uh, and ETF and this thing because this looks pretty similar should start to get some legs above it shorts will begin to start to cover their positions and you should start to see us get above these targets that I have set out. Uh, above that, clear skies until that 21 level. Uh, and then above that level, um, you should really start to get this thing into gear. And start taking back some of these massive uh, trend down months. So, hopefully you guys enjoy this different aspect to it. I know this video was a little bit longer. Thanks for stopping by. We'll catch you guys in the next one. If you don't mind, leave a like. Leave a comment below if there's another stock or something you'd like for me to review. Uh, another futures contract you'd like for me to re review. Any other indices, I'll do my best to break it down and give you my insight on it. Uh, but like I said, DraftKings, really good buy down here at the lows. Still think it's a really good buy for the long term as you uh, could potentially target back up to 40s level. Um, and I think that's a great, great long-term target. So thanks for stopping by once again. We'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.